Stephen, is FinOps an implementation or a culture shift throughout your entire company? Is it something that uh, I can take and implement in a week, or is it just something that uh, is going to take some time to kind of you know get rolling? Yeah, it, it depends on the organization and how much legacy cloud usage they have. Uh, if they have a large cloud culture, it's going to take some time to shift off of the old mechanisms that they may have been using. But as you're mentioning, it has to come down to every person that has access to launch a cloud resource has to have the cost implications and the optimization implications behind what they're doing. And it that also extends to the financial team. So it reaches throughout the entire organization and people need to drive that cultural change, embed it in their knowledge and change their ways sometimes. You know, I think one of the things that has been so amazing for the growth of FinOps is that a lot of people have been doing this since before it was called FinOps, right? Mm -hmm. There was a lot of people talking about, oh, Fin DevOps, Fin Dev, DevOps, Dev this, whatever, you know, it, you can, it's easy to get lost in all the terminology, but the reality is there's always been that person in the organization who knew what was going on in the cloud. And when the bill was too high, that was the person the CFO was yelling at. And then they were off chasing the engineers and then they were off chasing other people and they're trying to figure out and they're connecting the dots. The way I like to think about it is FinOps has been there since it's as old as the cloud, right? And you've been standing, you know, that, that, that small team has been standing in the eye of this hurricane trying to make sure that they move with it so they don't get killed, essentially, right? And now there's just an amazing amount of attention put to it. Economy is one thing, but you don't get an organization that's been growing as fast as the FinOps organization if there isn't something there, right? If there isn't like an existential threat, because the way I think about it even beyond this is if, if FinOps is going to, um, you know, kind of live up to its potential, this is also going to help the cloud itself live up to its potential, right? Because it's easy to look at the earnings and the growth and think about the total IT space. And it's something like, I don't know, $2 trillion or $3 trillion. A very small sliver of that is actually moved to the cloud. And we all need it to move faster because it's going to be a huge shame if it doesn't move faster because it's going to, ha we won't live long enough. To <laughs> it's see still it going to be there. It's still going to be there. And I want to see it happen, right? You know, I, I definitely want to see, I want to see the world move the majority to cloud before, before I retire. I think you've seen two things happen recently in the FinOps area where companies have realized the amount of ROI that they get from spending on this type of activity. Um, and they've also realized that this isn't a once and done type of solution, that it has to be a continuous process. Mm -hmm. And you put those two things together and they see the impact of it over the long run. And now all of a sudden they start to make more and more investments in this area. Yeah, but what's the difference, right? Um, when we were trying to go to the cloud, it was a skill set, right? We couldn't get there fast enough because we don't have enough skills. Now we're there fast enough and oh, oh my goodness, we're we're spending too much money. Well, you don't have the skills still, honestly. You we, know? <laughs> but I mean, I, I agree with that. Yeah. I really agree with the understanding. Companies want to move fast to the cloud and they want to go as quick as possible. So they say, you get us to the cloud. They get us to the cloud and like, oh my God, you're spending $100,000 a month. That's you know, costing us more than what we originally wanted to do. Well, you told me to get you there and they built like for like for the environment. Here's my concern with FinOps and it is a cultural shift. Uh, if you think about, uh, here's a good question for you, Matt, because mm -hmm. I, I know there's, there's probably a lot of it that you've seen out there. And back then in the culture shift, it was like, I don't care about the cost is because I own the data center. My engineers will deploy out whatever they want. I've already allocated that through my CapEx. It's going to be done throughout the thing. But now we're trying to get engineers to care about the cost that they're spending in the cloud, the dollars that we're spending. How do you yep. do that? Yeah, well, you know, it does take a whole culture and, and it's a holistic process. But, but I would argue that people have been doing this even back in the day of the data center. They were concerned about how do they get the most cost out of the equation? Even if you're looking at DevOps as, as mm -hmm. something, I mean, that was like trying to get less people out of the, uh, out of the equation and, and optimize costs there. But you know, the holistic side of it, we like to, if possible, start with the well-architected framework where cost optimization is a consistent pillar across all the hyperscalers. And then, you know, cost optimization becomes really part of the culture where you're running those well-architected reviews. You have certain tools or services like ProsperOps that you can re uh, realize immediate savings. But then there's some areas like if you want to optimize your Dynamo or optimize, um, you know, e e e e uh, Elastic Beanstalk, whatever, 
that you need to do stuff within the architecture. So we have services that can help people in doing that too. Um, but there isn't really an easy button. And like you said, it's not something you turn on. It's a holistic process. And then having mm -hmm. the tools for observability and managing costs down to the department level, managing Kubernetes, which adds another level of complexity. Oh, yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, Kubernetes is a lot of fun. I mean, a lot of people <laughs> have moved to Kubernetes, excited about it, and then they realize, wait a second, now I just have this huge black box and I don't understand what this thing is costing me, right? And and it's it's terrifying because now that it's just it's running, no, you know, you can't tie down to an individual pod or workload and you can't tie it back to all the infrastructure choices you're making. And so you lose that visibility. We've had a lot of customers come to us specifically because of that, because they're like, yeah, I think I used to understand, but now I really can't. All right. And it's hard to line up those two worlds. It's like you've got a cloud within a cloud with Kubernetes. Yeah. Oh. And, and I, I've seen in the industry a lot of success, and, and it's also an emerging study of gamification. And you need the tools like yours for customers to see the opportunity mm -hmm. and for, to highlight the wins that they're, winning, they're achieving, uh, and, and whether it be through automation or through pure, pure engineering optimizations that are taking place behind the scenes. That's but, where this, this partnership that we've got is really working because you know, our customers immediately come to us and they go, man, you've opened my eyes to how these things are breaking apart. But now I, what the heck am I going to do about <laughs> it? Right. You've terrified me. And we're like, well, this is where the automation comes in. This is where you can apply things to start bringing spot. You know, you've, one of the benefits of, of, of the cloud is this concept that we don't talk often enough, elasticity, right? Things should scale up as easily as they scale down. Over the last couple of years, most people are, are, are terrified because they're discovering that they were really good at scaling up, but they haven't figured out how to scale down. Right. And the travel companies all got really smart about that. If you want to find some of the smartest people about how to be truly elastic right now, the travel companies, because COVID, when it hit, they had to mm -hmm. figure out how to scale down or they went out of business, right? And now you've got everybody else trying to figure that out because everything is scaled up. So when we bring that visibility, the next question is always, okay, how am I going to automate this? And nobody wants to, the equation is too complicated, right? Handling spot application is it's too complicated. Handling RI, you know, allocation, it's too complicated. The world is not getting easier, right? You need to bring automation in there. In the old days, when we all got started, we could like do the equation on the back of an envelope. Now, I mean, how many EC2 instances are out there? It's like two, 300, you know, probably like 20 more by the time this podcast is over. So there's about like 100,000 yeah. different variations it's, for it. <laughs> it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Right? <laughs>